Third speaker from Graph Co is Rich Porter, where he's the director of the Silicon Verification. Um, he's going to um, speak about why you shouldn't use Python for verification. Uh, he has 25 years of design and verification experience in both startups and large multinationals. Spent his first 10 years in industry writing RTL until he realized that all the interesting work was in verification. Um, Rich is currently director of Silicon Verification at GraphCon. Over to you, Rich. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Mike. Um, so this is a <coughs> deliberately pro provocative title to grab your attention. Um, alternatively, it could be called uh, the pitfalls of using Python for verification. Um, I'd like to go through a number of issues that I've personally come up against while working with Python in the silicon verification space. I'll also present some workarounds which I've used. So that's a picture of me on a good day. I'm smiling, although it must be from a few years ago because I'm considerably gray now. I can't tell you whether that's from uh, years of using Python or one year of lockdown. Um, anyways, when we started GraphQL, the first thing we did was sit down and select uh, the standard tools and languages uh, that we're going to use. So um, I'm at least partially responsible for GraphQL's use of uh, Python for its uh, infrastructure. So how does GraphQL use Python? Uh, we have in the region of uh, 300,000 lines of Python in our front-end repository now. And this body of code is grow more or less linearly over time. Uh, it drives our continuous integration, regression and test infrastructure, and we also use it for test generation and functional coverage. Uh, Ian and Svet already talked about this. Uh, with so much code, the uh, structure is important, which is why it's organized as modules and not monolithic scripts. And um, the scripts we have just glue all the modules together. Um, we do use standalone Python, but much is linked into other applications, such as simulators. And we use tools such as Siphon and Boost Python to drive the foreign language integration. Uh, over the years of developing this code base, we've had a number of issues that we've had to work around or, or work with. Um, they're not unique to using Python for uh, DV, but uh, you need to be aware of them if you're going to use Python for it. Um, so reason number one goes straight for the jugular. I mean, Python is slow. You know, how slow? Well, slow compared to compiled code like C or C++. Um, its memory usage can be considerably higher. Why? Well, because Python is interpreted in the dynamic scope of optimization um, is limited. Uh, the example I've got here is uh, shamelessly scraped from the internet. Um, there's some links in there if you want to look more. Um, and it shows how poor the performance can be uh, against C code for some examples. Um, of course, it's not all this bad as, uh, you know, I've selected some pathological cases here. Um, it's just indicative of how bad it can get. Um, here it's using magnitudes of more memory and CPU time you see. Um, but there are some ameliorations. Um, Python performance generally gets better with each newer version. Python 3 is definitely faster than Python 2. Um, you can write critical code sections in, uh, for example, C++ to improve speed and memory usage. This is a common approach that's used by many applications. Um, C Python is the uh, canonical Python implementation and is written in C. It's what you normally get when you type Python on the command line. There are other implementations that are faster, um, but they do come with compatibility issues, uh, including but not limited to uh, foreign language integration. So PyPy is a just-in-time compiled version of Python. Um, in the past, we saw a 10x improvement with PyPy um, over Python 2 with a test generator. Uh, Piston was uh, created by Dropbox and later dropped development, um, but it has since been reanimated, um, although it's now closed source. Um, I've not tried Jython personally, but it, it runs on JVM, a Java virtual machine. Um, but here's a neat trick to compile pure Python to C code. It's not going to give you uh, 10x or even 2x, but uh, 20, uh, sorry, 20 percent could still be a win in your application. And um, you can just pass pure Python through Siphon and compile the C output into a shared object that you can directly import into Python. Um, the code's at the end of the presentation, and there's uh, an implementation of the Civ of Aristophanes um, to generate prime numbers. Um, the runtime here doesn't include compilation time it with GCC or within the tool. Uh, but however, there's a 20% saving 
in runtime just with the simple compilation detailed on the previous slide. Um, but you do almost get a five times speed up with uh, PyPy. So uh, GraphCall uses both Cython compilation and C++ uh, integration to un bottleneck performance pinch points. Reason two is the lack of parallelism. You can't easily run multiple threads simultaneously. Threading in C Python does not work like threading in C. And although they run concurrently, they never run at the same time. This is due to the GIL or the global interpreter lock. It's a mutex that protects access to Python objects and prevents multiple threads running in parallel on separate physical cores. And this is far from ideal in modern multi-core processors. Um, you, can bypass, you can bypass the GIL by creating threads outside of Python. Um, NumPy and SciPy do this, uh, but now you have ownership of the objects as they have to be copies of the Python data. So this needs to be managed in an out of Python. So that's extra work for you. Uh, reason three is lack of typing. But that's why I use Python. It's dynamically typed. Um, but a compiled language would catch goof typing bugs that only appear after an excessive amount of runtime or an infrequently executed code. And this is the trade-off for not having to wait for compilation, I guess. Um, type hints exist from version 3.5, which may go some way to relay this type of issue. Um, but it can be hard to retrofit that into a, an existing large code base. Reason four is lack of consistency. This is another great gotcha that we've suffered from. It transpires that you can't rely on the order of iteration of a certain object. Sometimes it depends on memory laying. So you have to sort the contents of an object prior to iteration if this is important to you. Um, this can be very dependent on the loading configuration of the host machine. So bugs in your code related to this may only become visible very infrequently. And of course, are, are now impossible to reproduce. Um, objects have become more ordered by definition in uh, later versions. So this is becoming less of an issue if you track the latest releases. Uh, I think it might only be set left um, in later versions. Reason five is Python can be difficult to debug. And there is Python a victim of its own productivity? Any large application written in any language can be difficult to debug, but Python applications seem to keep growing in size. But when you link into other tools like simulators or libraries, it can be difficult to see what's going on and transitions between those languages. Um, mixing languages, as I've advocated, produces mixed stack traces when it all goes wrong, especially with callbacks when the thread of execution passes between simulator C++ and Python. Because you get a C Python stack trace and not a Python code stack trace, it is possible to demangle that stack trace, but not the obfuscated simulator track stack trace. Um, and also multi-threaded deadlocks are further entertainment, although it's arguable that's our fault for using multi-threaded code in the first place. Um, oh yeah, so some more tools that we found to be useful when debugging Python issues. Um, remote PDP allows interactive Python debug in a remote shell. So you don't need access to the standard input, standard output, and standard error of the process being debugged. It's especially useful when it's buried in uh, subshells. Uh, C profile for code profiling, um, and many visualization tools to help analyze the output. Um, I find uh, many unexpected and surprising performance issues, some of which have been remarkably trivial to fix. Um, also available memory profilers like Guppy. Um, if uh, if you have a process, a Python process that's uh, consuming too much memory. And some more afterthoughts. Um, Python's been around for ages. If you're chasing the latest fashion, then Python might not be your number one choice. Um, I'm pretty sure it's been used in the DV community for more than 20 years. I've certainly seen people using it that long ago. Um, and I wrote a series of blog posts eight years ago centered on the use of uh, Python MySQL for. Uh, digital, uh, digital verification too. Uh, the link's there if you're interested in that. Um, everyone has their favorite scripting language, but uh, how many how many spaces to use? I, I noticed that uh, Ray was using two. 
Um, uh, but lots of other people ask questions like, why doesn't Python use braces like everyone else? So lots of fun uh, discussions with co-workers. Other idiosyncratic differences, uh, like the ternary operator, you know, Python just had to be different and couldn't use uh, query colon like everybody else. Um, but Python is an improvement over the old, uh, older interpreted languages. I'm looking at TCL in Perl here. Um, they're getting along in the tooth. Uh, we should be using the right tool for the right job and shouldn't be trying to do script like working system very long or C. Even if Python does have poor performance, um, it's only running at the, if it's only running at the start of the end of a simulation, then it's not going to massively slow down the whole thing. Uh, batteries, uh, Python's batteries included philosophy means there's a rich ecosystem of libraries uh, and lots of online help. Um, another plus is that Python is uh, mostly used outside of the DV space and many software engineers are familiar with it. Um, it can be a reassuring comfort blanket for them, um, especially if they're unfamiliar with system Verilog. We only need to teach them uh, verification methodology and they can become proficient quickly. Graph could use some software resource for verification of our first chip, and it was a, really was a positive experience for everyone. Um, alternatively, you could just use a, yeah, a younger and more fashionable model, um, like Rust, Golang, Julia, are becoming very popular, but uh, I can't say I've used any of them. Um, JavaScript is fast, but it attracts more than its fair share of negativity, I think. Um, I like its uh, synchronous and um, event-based model. I think it would work well with digital simulations. Um, there are large teams working on browser engines, squeezing you know every last bit of performance out of it. And, you know, if I ever get time, I think that something I'd want to look at next is uh, JavaScript or or Lua even for for this type of uh, application. Um, finally, I've got to put this plug in. Um, Graphcore is hiring. Any any uh, verification engineers uh, interested? Please do contact us. Thank you. Or well, I presume any software engineers as well, which given your yeah. Um, <laughs> and um, yeah, that's that's fine to, to to give that. I think everybody's hiring as well, by the way. So you, I don't think you're unique in your hiring. That's absolutely, I can. Yeah, absolutely. It's your, it's a, your, your, your move from design to verification all those years ago was a, was a sensible move, Rich. So, oh, yeah, absolutely, uh, and that's why I tell everyone. <laughs> get them all over to the, to the right side. Um, okay, I think we, unfortunately we've run out of time, so um, we do have quite a number of questions, a huge number of questions, um, yeah. but we wanted to uh, let Graphcore do their three presentations and unfortunately we've run out of time now. We will share those questions uh, with Graphcore and um, and then we'll get back to you and also the demo will be recorded uh, and sent out on the link as well so thank you to um everybody at Graphco, um for their talks today it was a it's, it's fantastic to see um a team actually using this so thank you to ian sweat and rich and um,